Hello YouTube, my name is Paul. Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another pickup video. An Ocean Software pickup video. First one I've done since Christmas. Um, the games are starting to dwindle, as in there's not many games out there that I need. In fact, the ones I need seem to be nigh on impossible to find. Now, there's many different games from many different... Actually, it's not many different games. There's lots of different formats here. But some games I've got on multiple formats. So I do apologise in advance to uh, go through the same games on more than one machine. But state of play at the moment, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, full UK set. I say UK because there are some games linked to Ocean Software in Spain, for argument's sake. So I stick with the UK releases for now. If I find some of these other Spanish anomalies like Beach Volley I do have. There's a footballer who released a game. He didn't release a game. Urbisoft, Stroke Ocean, whoever released a game in Spain based on this footballer. I do believe I have the second game, but not the first one. Um, <clears throat> but luckily, there's no French compilations on the Sinclair Spectrum, as far as I'm aware. Amiga's exactly the same. We'll go for a full UK set, even though I do pick up quite a few compilations from France. And regrettably, I missed out on a compilation in France that I've never seen before. Looked on Hall of Light, there was no evidence of it, its existence. It's the first Amiga compilation I've ever seen in a clam case. So I was gutted when I contacted the person to see would they ship it to the United Kingdom. They left it and left it and left it. The item went and they replied and said no. So that's quite annoying. So yeah, Amiga, I'm, I'm happy where I am. But I know there's like compilations out there that I would like from France. Amstrad, I'm now down to nine floppy disk games left to get. I.e. standalone games. I'm not interested in compilations. Um, because there's quite a few compilations on the Amstrad. Almost as big as the Spectrum in the UK. But there's loads of French compilations on floppy disks. Now, I'm not going to commit to that. I would pick up the odd one or two, which I have done in the past. But we just stick with the standalone games for the time being. But the biggest draw to me for the Amstrad disk-based games are those lovely wallet cases. with Which now have two left to pick up. Then we've got the C64. I've got a game here that is linked to Ocean via a uh, what was it? A program called Commercial Breaks that featured in this, or already featured in a pickup video a long time ago for me. So it got released in Germany as well. Uh, Atari ST. I've got the games I want, the standalone games. There's one compilation that I need to pick up, but again, the ST was very, very popular in France. There's quite a few French compilations I'm not interested in. So it's just a one ocean compilation in the UK I'd like to pick up. And then I come across one that was given away as part of a pack. I guess with a machine, I suppose. But again, I need to pick that up first. So there's a couple of anomalies on the ST, but standalone games are finished there. C64, like I said, it's just exclusives on the C64. Maybe a few games I love to pick up in wallet form. I know some of the games came out in wallet form on the C64 that didn't come out on the Amstrad, like Rambo First Blood Part 2. Very slim chance it might be a Mikey, but again, probably one of the rarest Ocean Stroke Imagine games you'll ever find on a C64. But besides that, yes, I would like to get every game on the Obscure Micros, because there's not many, maybe four, five, or six, or whatever on those systems. BBC Acorn Electron, Dragon 32, Oric, Atari 8 Bits, Commodore 16, Commodore Vic 20. The list is quite exhaustive, extensive even. But yeah, so let's crack on, shall we? So yeah, so I do apologise in advance for showing the same game on multiple different systems, but I won't talk about it for that long. But any experiences of any of these games that you might have played back in the day, please leave a comment below, because some of these games I've never played before. So first up, we have Hunchback. This game must be the most popular port by Ocean Software, so I think it came out on pretty much everything. That's the Electron version. Quite a few Electron games, I believe. When I say quite a few, it's probably around about, I don't know, 10 maybe? I might be wrong. But yeah, never played it. Never played this version of it anyway. And then we have, guess what? Hunchback. But this time on the Commodore VIC-20. Now I have sampled this game. It plays just as well as any other version, in my opinion. Graphics are functional, looks okay. I probably wouldn't have been disappointed by it back in the day if I had a VIC-20. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't really say anything negative about it, to be fair. It plays just, just, just the same. 
not not bad at all. The thing is with this version, because of the limitations of the machine, you don't really get any of the sort of intro, not intro, title screen. Do you get a title screen? I might be talking at my ass. Ignore that. It's it's a good game. I played Hunchback now on too many systems. I'm confused. Now next up, I know this exists in wallet form on the BBC, exists in wallet form on the Amstrad on the Commodore 64. And that is Daily Thompson's Super Test. Again, very much in the vein of Hyper Sports, this one. Uh, quite hard to find this, even on the BBC. Uh, very difficult to find it in wallet form, full stop. But yeah, quite happy to pick this one up. I think this one came up maybe retrogames.co.uk. I think this might have been a tenner. I'm pretty sure that's where I got it from. It's, it looks it looks good. I've, I've seen it on YouTube. I haven't played it. But I do have a BBC emulator. I just haven't managed to work out how to set the joystick up. So yeah, once I've got once I've done that, I will give these these games a go. Then we got Yar Kung Fu this time on the BBC Micro and the Electron. This game features quite a bit in this video. Um, I have also got it again on the BBC Micro, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, again, the BBC Micro version looks really good. If it wasn't for that control issue that I had, I probably would probably have liked to have played it, to be fair. Now, let me know in the comments below what the differences are between the two. I'm not sure if you guys ever owned any of these machines, but yeah. I should check it out on YouTube, really. Uh, then we've got Yar Kung Fu 2. This time it's on the BBC Micro. I believe this did not come out on the Electron. I might be wrong. This game was quite similar to... Um, I want to say dungeon, it's not Dungeon Master, Paul, it's Kung Fu Master. Got dungeon Master on the bloody brain. Uh, but yeah, it looks good, even even again on the BBC, it looks good. Shame I just couldn't play it. But yeah, nice one to have. Again, that one's about between five and ten quid. It, it, it's not a rarity or nothing, it's just, uh, yeah, you don't really see these games very often, do you? Outside of your Kung Fu and Hunchback, anyway. Then we've got Green Beret on the Atari. Um... Another quite obscure one. But if you look at the cassette, the amount of tape in the cassette is a bit of a concern. You should probably spend about 15, 20 minutes loading this up to end up with an absolute pile of steamy shit. Because Green Beret is either an excellent conversion on some computers, namely the ZX Spectrum, and it's an absolute piss poor conversion on other systems. For example, the Commodore 16. But yeah, never played it. I have seen it, it looks horrible. And then we've got Yar Kung Fu again. This one is a version that I played back in the day. On my friend's Commodore 16. Now this is one of the better Imagine Ocean releases on the C16. I've got to say it plays really well. Not sure why they're advertising Rambo on the back of theirs. I don't think Rambo got a, a C16 release. Or did it? Please let me know if it did. I don't think it did though, did it? But yeah, there's some games on, on the C16 that I'm after. Green Beret is appalling. I don't have that. I know there's a Konami compilation which does have four games, but I can't remember what they are. Did Mikey get a release as well on the Commodore 16? I don't know. But yeah, Yeo Kung Fu plays really well. Uh, it's cut out the menu screen, just goes straight into the game. Which is understandable, really, but it's a really good port on that system. Right, so that's it for the obscurities. Or is it? No, it's not. I've got one wallet game to show you, and you're going to have to guess what this wallet game is for the BBC Micro. You've guessed it, you guessed it right, it's Yar Kung Fu. On what in wallet form? Unfortunately, it's in lovely condition, mind, I've got to say. Absolutely fantastic condition. Bit of old shine on there. Um, but inside it, you've got the floppy disk, no instructions, but luckily, the BBC, unlike the Amstrad on the Commodore 64, has universal instructions. So I'll probably just take it out of that clam case. I stick it in there. Now in terms of BBC Wallet games, I've now got two. Both good games on the BBC, got to say. I know I'm missing um, Daily Thompson Super Test, but beyond that, I'm not sure what else came out on floppy disk on the BBC. I'm really hoping Mikey did. I know Mikey got a cassette release, but I don't know if it got a wallet release. Now, getting a wallet version of that game is very hard. It's very hard to find it on the C64 at the best of times. Didn't come out on the Amstrad under the Imagine label. So the only other likely candidate is going to be for the BBC. Right, that's it for that, definitely. Right, next up we've got a Commodore 64 title or two. 
we have two. If I can find it. Which I'm struggling to find where it's gone. Found it. Right, first up we got uh, a game which featured in Commercial Breaks. Uh, program, awesome program that if you've not seen it. I will leave a link to it below. Um, but this game featured in it, one of the games, one of the many, many games Ocean Software rejected. Um, some games only made it straight to uh, magazine cover tapes. Some games, like I said before, ended up in far, far uh, reaching countries, far fetched countries, whatever the phrase goes. This one stayed in the UK and released by Alpha. That is called The Secret of Kandar. Now, I believe it may have also come out under a different publisher in the UK. Powerhouse, I want to say. Might be wrong. Now, this game, yeah, featured in that program. It is, um, it's all right, I suppose. It's a arcade adventure. Graphics are very bland, I've got to say. I mean, the reason why it was rejected because the graphics and animation won't stay at the art. I do like the music, though. The music's quite catchy. But again, yeah, you just go up and down the stairs, picking up objects to go into different doors. I found it quite difficult, to be fair. You pick up these keys, which don't seem to open any door whatsoever. The doors that are closed don't open, and you go through an open door and get eaten by a green blob. So yeah, I can see why it was rejected. However, having said that, Ocean did, didn't reject quite a few of their own games that they probably should have done, really. Um, <laughs> especially this one. I found this one to look appalling. But an impulse buy, and that's Galvin in wallet form. Um, this came up £35 buy it now, so I've picked it up. I thought it was a good price, to be fair. It's incomplete, which is a shame, but never mind. But this game, again, it, it just looks worse than the Secret of Candor, I've got to say. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, you pick up certain power ups which enable you to have a gun or some kind of ray or something, which does help quite a bit. But going up and down those bloody ladders are a pain in the ass. You're not quite sure where you're supposed to jump off. I didn't anyway. But yeah, I didn't. I was quite underwhelmed with it. It might be a brilliant game. I don't know. But I didn't give it enough time. But to look at, bloody hell, it's, it's grim. I think Secret of Kandai is probably better than that. And to be fair, they released Cobra, didn't they, on the C64? And the Amstrad. Don't know. I think some games they probably were overly invested in. Some games like that one there, which was done by a third person, they probably just found it a lot easier to reject, didn't they? Right, next up we have some Commodore Amiga. Now, Amiga-wise, like I said, I'm pretty much there. It's just these French compilations. I was gutted to miss that plastic case one, though. But the one I did need, and I've been waiting for this one for quite some time, is called Les Justices. Completely killed that, I think. But this is part two. This is part two of a three-part compilation featuring some awesome ocean games. Oh, yeah, so I've got all three of them now. So I am still missing, as far as I know, the one that I saw and never will be seen again. Um, I think I'm missing three. But I can't pronounce them. But yeah, nice to have this anyway. So this comes complete with its poster and comes with its discs, as you would expect. Uh, I think this might have cost me about 25 to £30 pound because of shipping and VAT. Um, the games on it, they've got Cabal. Cabal's a really good, really good game, actually. Not one I've really played a lot, to be fair. The Spectrum version I love. Um, Ghostbusters 2 is not really for me. I struggle with it, to be honest. But Operation Thunderbolt, I played that a lot on the Atari ST. I thought it was a great game. Um, I could usually get to about stage 5. Um, without continuing. But you need so many bloody grenades, don't you? You've got to be really sparing, especially early on, trying to keep as many grenades as possible. And a lot of it's luck as well, isn't it? The amount of things that come, that like, drop down towards you. I mean, some of it's just plain old magazines and grenades. But sometimes you get a massive supply box or you get a massive piece of energy, which really helps, but sometimes you don't. So yeah, it's a bit of luck with that game, unfortunately. But yeah, Operation Thunderbolt's a great conversion. And then there's this plain blue box that I picked up, which I have seen before. An Ocean's Dixon's Amiga pack. Now, I don't remember ever getting a pack like this on my Amiga, or for my Amiga. I bought the 600 and 1200 from Dixon's, but I never got anything with it, really, apart from Lemmings. But inside the box, you've got multiple instructions for the multiple games. Uh, Lethal Weapon's a good platformer. 
Whiz Kid is a very good puzzly game. Uh, not my cup of tea, to be fair, but it's a good game. The one I've opted to show you is Robocop 3, which is one of the games that I spent many hours playing. I can get quite far in it. There's a very good take on the film, to be fair, because the film's rubbish, wasn't it, Robocop 3? Um, but I loved it on the Amiga, yeah, so I remember buying it back in the day. Um, blown away by the first level, to be fair, because it was made by the guys who bought us uh, F-29 Retaliator and Epic. So yeah, brilliant. I'm not sure if Epic came out after or before this, actually. But yeah, I really like Robocop 3. I thought it was a great game. But yeah, if you know if you know why that compilation was given out by Dixons, please let us know, because it's not, an, not one you see very often, to be fair. Right, next up is the Amstrad. I've put the Amstrad stuff down. But I don't know where I put it. Oh, there it is. Right, so we've got, we got two wallet games and a game that was released by Amsoft. It was actually released by Ocean, but for some reason on floppy disk, it came out under the Amsoft label. So unless you know this game came out in a wallet, which I don't think it did, because I assume this would be re-released. Because I think the 6128 or any disc-based Amstrads were a bit later, weren't they? So I don't really know the story behind this, and that's Hunchback. But I know it came out exactly the same as all the other versions on cassette. But yeah, Amsoft. Now, this version of the game, again, plays like the others. I just found the Amsoft version a bit sluggish. I think the graphics are okay. There's something about it that didn't play quite as well as the Synchro Spectrum, even though it looked and, sound, looked and sounded better. It just didn't play as well. Sometimes it's what you're used to, isn't it? And I think with that game now, I'm quite used to the specy version. In fact, I even preferred the other versions to that, really. The VIC-20 version probably played better than that. I don't know. Then we've got two wallet games. Uh, one I bought a while ago. Probably featured in my uh, 6128 disc game collection video. And the other one was highlighted to me by Will. Um, sent me a message via Instagram. And uh, to be fair, I've never seen that before on the Amstrad in the sort of four years I've been picking games up for it. In fact, I don't think I've ever. I, I think I've only ever seen it once, maybe on the C sixty four. But first up, we have Short Circuit in wallet form, complete from France. Now both these games would have set me back about a hundred quid. So yeah, not cheap, not cheap at all. But I am, like I said, got two left to get now. Complete with its dedicated Amstrad disc instructions. Now this game is not a bad game. I should read the instructions really to get the most out of it. But it's one of those arcade adventures. Um, I think Johnny Five has different functions where you can ex was it explore, not explore, examine sort of furniture and stuff like that to find items to progress in the game. He can sort of link himself up into into computers to do certain things. But again, like I said, I've not really played it to be fair. But I did manage to find my way out of the building to get captured by the military and disassembled. Johnny Five disassembled. But yeah, a great film. Love that, that film. But the game itself, yeah, it's probably a very good game. It has two games. It has that element and it has the arcade element, which is quite bland and boring. But apparently Ocean guys weren't too keen on the arcade adventure side of it. Yeah, so yeah, lovely to have it though. Brilliant. I always thought I had that game and I've seen it come up before. In fact, it came up recently and sold recently. Um, but yeah, it stopped me from buying it, so I thought I had it. And next up is an awesome addition as a collector. Awesome addition but one of the most shit games Ocean ever released. And that is Miami Vice. Screams 1980s, doesn't it? Screams it. Look at that. But yeah, it's brilliant to have that. Thank you very much, Will, for showing that to me on the, uh, the old link, mate. But yeah, really pleased to have this. Again, Amstrad specific instructions. The game itself, though, my God. It's one of those games, especially on the Amstrad, where you move... You start moving, you go from 0 to sort of 19 about a second. But it seems to take about an age to slow down again. So yeah, you shoot off quite nicely and then to break, bloody hell. It's almost like a whole screen's length to slow down. And when you turn, the turning is quite urgent. So rather than trying to go 45 degrees, it kind of just spins around on itself. It's got a very strange mechanic when it comes to shooting. you almost got to push the shoot button, re, re I don't know, reconfigure the gun is it going to shoot behind you out to the side or in front by the time you've done all that and the speed you're going at you're, you're dead so yeah 
but you're supposed to arrive at certain locations at certain times and do certain missions. But to be honest, I can't even get past the driving bit. But yeah, brilliant. Like I said, awesome collector's piece. Just a very bad game. That leaves us with the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, I believe. Now, I've got one of those nice, funky cased Imagine titles. So, if I show you the two I've already got. That's these two. Now, I'm not sure how many games got released like that by Imagine. But finding a third one has kind of made me think, did they all get a release like that? Because there was an advert back in the day in one of the magazines that had a whole load of games like that in the picture. So maybe they all came out like it. <clears throat> I can assume you went into the shop and bought it like that. I don't know, to be fair. And then I've got a plus three disc game. I've got a, a variant of a very popular burger franchise. And I've got a compilation, which is probably the grail compilation to pick up on the Ocean Software label. So I'll show you the two more common items first. So the first one is this Chart Busters disc. Not sure how this came out, by the way. Was it bundled in with a plus three? I can assume it is. Uh, six games on there, though. You've got Mutants, which is a game I'm not familiar with. BR Kung Fu, we talked about many times already. The Great Escape, love that game. Short Circuit, we just talked about that. And two games by Jonathan Smith that I am determined to complete. Now, I can get to the last level on both of these games. They are frustrating as hell. You need a bit of luck on your side. Now, Stallone's Cobra, very good. Grant. It's, it's a very capable game, isn't it? It looks and plays fantastically. Just hard. And Green Beret's the same. I mean, Jonathan Smith, he's done some amazing things back in the day, didn't he? But Green Beret, I mean, I can get to the last level. But those ladders are the most common cause of death in Green Beret. You duck, you go down the ladder, you're dead. You jump, you catch the ladder, you're climbing up it, you're dead. And you get sandwiched between two geezers and a bullet. You've got no hope. You can't You can't move quick enough. You've got to be sandwiched between two bloody geezers and a bullet, dear. But, yeah, it, it's a, a brilliant game. I am determined to complete it. Yeah, it doesn't say much on the disc, actually. It doesn't say what it came out with. I can only assume it was bundled. But, again, it's only I only got this because it's the only game that I'm aware of that came out on floppy disc. Uh, compilation wise I think the I think there are some others that did but also got a cassette release was that's exclusively on floppy disk didn't make myself very clear there did I uh, Mr Wimpy you've seen this one before many times as well this is a variant the second variant because the first variant I believe had a yellow spine uh, much in common with the Spectrum Games design before they become Ocean Software so yeah it looks like they rebranded this rebranded Kong there may have been another game that I can't remember. It may have just been those two that were rebranded re with that spine. Right, then we go to the funky Imagine box. Unfortunately, it's not complete, but this came up as a buy it now. Now, I'm pretty sure it's either £5 buy it now. I offered £5 for it. I can't remember. It was only £5, though. And that is... Jumping Jack. Looks like I have squashed the game. I've sat on it or something because it's very, it's not in the best of conditions, I've got to say. Especially that back end there. But yeah, so again, a very obscure title. Um, comes with its cassette. The instructions would normally come and sit in there. So the, the instructions wouldn't sit inside the cassette. Uh, which, is a, which is a shame, it just means it'd be very, well, near impossible now to find any instructions for that. Unless I'm lucky enough to find a copy that has it in. Now, bear in mind, it's the only one of those I've seen ever, I think. Whereas Zoom, for example, I didn't want to do that. Ooh, instructions are quite a fair size. And they sit snugly. This is probably the best example I've got, actually, of one of these boxes. It just, oh, cack angle or what? fits snugly inside the box so yeah if you've got any more information about these games and how many actually came out or a link to a picture with them in except for the advert that i saw in a magazine that would be great again jumping jack we'll play jumping jack and we it's on one of the little kind of bod looking character goes along the bottom jumps up through a gap in the platform and just keeps going all the way to the very top 
the problem is when you play it on emulation, you'll probably see it in my footage, um, I can't go left because the left key doesn't seem to exist on the PC keyboard. Yeah, so you've got space, I think, is right. Enter might be jump. It might be extend mode or something like that to go left. I don't know what it is, but it's not on the PC keyboard. And you can't play with joystick either. So yeah, I died a hell of a lot playing that. Try to get that footage. Uh, the last item is probably um, probably the hardest to find item, believe it or not. Then again, having said that, Miami Vice was bloody hard to find, wasn't it? And so was that jumping jack. But this was part of an auction. Uh, I can't remember where I got it from. Um, but I had to have it posted to me. And the postage, when you use an auction house, their postage and shipping costs are so bloody expensive. Because they've got to go and package it up for you, haven't they? Package it up and send it to you. And make a bit of bunks for themselves. So yeah, this is one of the three Addicted to Fun compilations. This is the one that is the most difficult to find. And when you see it, you probably know why. And that is the sports collection. So yeah, I think the auction probably cost me around 150 quid. With the Spectrum, this, and a load of crappy games. Like Make a Chip and Checkered Flag and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm assuming the person who sold the Spectrum thought this compilation of sports games was crap and not worth anything and bundled it in. Little did they know. So yeah, I saw that and there's no way I was going to let it go because it, you very rarely see it. It's very difficult to find even on the 16-bit home computers, to be fair. But you've got Pro Tennis Tour, probably the most, I don't know, the best game probably out of three. World Cup, Soccer Italy 90 or Italia 90 and Run the Gauntlet. Yeah, Run the Gauntlet's okay. It's, it's quite frustrating, actually. I thought I quite liked it. I played it a little bit for a bit, a little bit longer this time, but yeah, I didn't like it at all. But again, it's um, it's okay. But yeah, it's such an awesome find. It really is. And that, that finished off my UK released compilation set for the Sinclair Spectrum. So I shouldn't need much more now. Just a couple of variations, maybe. A couple of Spanish releases, and that's pretty much it, to be fair. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, anything else you might be aware of that I'm not, please leave in the comments below. But yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. And I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care and bye for now.